What is up, Waffle Gang? I do hope you are well. My name is Mark, and today we're checking out some r slash am I the butthole. <laughs> if you'd like to skip the initial waffle, timestamps are in the description and along the timeline below, so please feel free to use them, of course. And if you do enjoy the content, please consider hitting that like, that subscribe, and maybe that notification bell too, as it massively helps out our channel. It really, really does, and I can't express that enough. And with that being said, let's just crack straight on with today's stories. Much love, guys. Our first story comes from Am I the Arsehole? <laughs> Am I the Arsehole for blowing up at my wife after what she did at my workplace? Oh, here we go. I, Mayo 37, started working at my dad's friend's restaurant since 2016. Started off small, but was able to gain my employer's trust, and after seeing how I'd been managing the restaurant on days when he wasn't available, he decided to assign me to handle restaurant management. That means overseeing day-to-day -day operations, handling customer complaints, providing service, managing shifts, and putting together schedules, and so on. I'm not really the manager, but the staff thinks I am. My relationship and interaction with the staff have changed a bit, but it's got nothing to do with my behavior. My wife is my biggest supporter. She was thrilled after I told her I'm directly handling management. But I made it clear I'm not the manager, so I have limited authority. I'm not the ultimate decision maker in this establishment. Still, she went to tell everyone that her husband is now the manager of his workplace. Even posted about it, but I told her to take it down immediately. She showed up at the restaurant, doesn't normally eat there, and brought her friends with her. There was five of them. She invited them for lunch and ordered plenty of dishes. Then she embarrassed the waitress by refusing to pay, telling everyone that she's the wife of the manager and she shouldn't pay. She started arguing with the waitress, then went home. In two hours, I got a call from the waitress wanting to talk about what happened and why I fired her. I was shocked. I had no clue. She showed me the message that was sent from my Facebook, but I swore I didn't do it. I didn't even know my wife came to the restaurant. Turned out my wife sent the message on my behalf and fired the waitress, claiming her behavior was rude and unprofessional. I was livid. I got berated by the manager after he found out and I begged and explained that it was a mistake, a misunderstanding, and I was able to give an alibi as to when this message was sent. Thankfully, he was patient and graceful. I got home and I confronted her. She confirmed everything, even the message. I blew up, told her she almost caused me my entire job with her unacceptable behavior. For the millionth times I've told her I'm not the manager and she needed to stop using this as an excuse to behave like this. She started crying after I told her to apologize to the waitress after this, packed her stuff and left. I was so angry I smoked a cigarette, although I've been trying to quit. Her parents, my in-laws, called the minor to know what the hell their daughter did other than be excited for my new position and that I was wrong to cause her to cry when all she's ever been is supportive and encouraging. After they insisted I mishandled this argument, I just stopped talking to them. I'm now required to visit soon as possible and bring flowers and apologize to my wife for yelling, but I haven't done anything yet. Hell no, if I was in OP situation and I found out my other half did this, walked into a restaurant, was rude to staff in the first place, which is a big no, and then demands that she gets everything for free. Hell no. I think that for me, that would be more than enough to just say, look, I've had enough of this. <laughs> I know it's a big thing to say, but that would be over the line for me massively. Almost cost you your job as well. 100% not the asshole. Do not turn up and apologize. Do not enable that kind of behavior. But let's check out some of the comments to see what they say. And Seal Vor says, not the arsehole. I'm sorry to say this, man, but your wife didn't just cross the line. She sprinted across while cackling. You said that you've made it clear that you have your management responsibility, but not management authority. Even if you did have management authority, that would not entitle your wife and a group of friends to free food, unless this was detailed in the contract. The firing of the waitress through Facebook is not only wrong, but it's grounds for a lawsuit in most countries. Unfair dismissal springs to mind in the UK, not to mention most employees wouldn't fire someone through social media. Even if you had management authority, your wife does not, and she had no right, even if the waitress had spit in her face at the restaurant, to act in your name. The requirement to attend your in-laws with flowers and apologies is ludicrous. They're acting on incorrect information and hearsay, rather than actual fact and evidence. I'm sorry, you need to slap this down hard before any reconciliation can take place and the apologies should be coming to you, not from you. You also need to change your social media passwords and throw the cigarettes away. Having just one never turns out to be just one. They're like Pringles. And 511 says not the arsehole. Maybe don't apologize and hopefully she won't come back. 
And Raj says, not the asshole, how old is your wife? Because she sounds like a child. To which OP replies, 33 years old. And Larry Mann replies to that saying, I'm a 33 year old woman. Your wife is toxic. She almost cost you your job for no reason. Do not let her come home until she apologized for almost getting you fired. And to the waitress, she scared the hell out of. In fact, give some flowers or some sort of apology to that poor waitress instead of your wife. And finally, Capital Philosopher says, not the asshole, don't you dare apologize to your wife. Is she trying to get you fired? Her behavior is just outrageous. I would never in a million years go to my husband's place of employment and embarrass him like that. I'm sure you were mortified. Hell, I'm mortified for you. I don't give a fuck how old your wife is. My 15 year old has more manners. And now I turn this one to you guys. What do you guys think of this situation? And what would you do if your partner did this when you was in that position? Let me know in the comments below. And our next story is from OKCase9067. Am I the asshole for forcing my fiance to quit his job that he loves? My fiance and I are both 26 and we're expecting our first child in June. He works over an hour from where we live, makes around 800 to 900 per week and works full time. However, I make around 1800 to 1900 a week working the same hours. We decided daycare wasn't an option due to the price, location, and not wanting to put a newborn into daycare. I'm planning on having the baby and going back to work. However, his family thinks it's unfair that I'm making him quit his job, that he loves to babysit while I go off and work instead of looking after our son. In their eyes, the mother should be looking after the baby. Oh dear. They think it's cruel and unnatural that he's going to be doing the caregiving and I'll never bond with my child if we stick with this plan. I know it's probably clear cut, however, I'm starting to doubt our plans. Will going back to work make me a bad mum? And is it wrong he is quitting his job? My fiance is in favor for staying home. It was his idea and he is super excited. His parents have brought up putting him in daycare near their place if I'm so against looking after him. Extra bit of information, he wants to start his own business and is going to try to use his time working on it. His family is also against this. So am I the asshole for not staying at home and going back to work, letting my fiance quit his job to look after our son? Now we're pretty much gonna head straight to the comments with this one apart from, you don't babysit your own kids. But anybody out here says, not the arsehole, you don't babysit your own kid. It's called parenting, good luck. And Duke with an egg says, and quotes, my fiance is in favor for staying home. It was his idea and he is super excited. Then says, you're such a terrible person for forcing him to, checks notes, do something he really wants to do. And it was his idea in the first place. Not the asshole. your husband's family are wrong on so many levels, starting with the concept that a man being a parent to their child is babysitting. And Cynical says, not the asshole. and parents don't babysit their children. Sorry, I hate when people say it. Sounds like his family is sticking its nose in where it doesn't belong. You guys have a plan. If you and your fiance are good with it, don't let them tell you any differently. And Dolphin Flop says, and quotes, my fiance is in favor of staying at home. It was his idea and he's super excited. And then says, so you didn't force him at all. Not the arsehole. Doesn't matter if his family doesn't like it. It's a logical arrangement and both of you are happy with it. Good luck. And now I turn this one to you guys. What do you guys think of this situation? I can only see it going one way, but I'd love to know if you have a different opinion. Let me know in the comments below. Now our next story comes from a random string of numbers. Am I the asshole for sending my daughter and her husband an eviction note? I have a daughter who got married three years ago. Her husband, son-in-law, Kevin, has a disability. My wife and I always wanted to help and support him and our daughter, although he tends to be mean sometimes. We don't get along because of Kevin's behavior towards everyone, especially towards our grandchildren. Kevin records scenes at family dinners, birthdays, etc. Starting arguments with older son for no reason. Kevin and our daughter lost a six month old due to SID. Then they recently moved to our city. We gave them an apartment and supported them, but they still had to pay rent so they don't rely on us to completely support them. Kevin keeps shaming us for asking them for rent and so far we've been patient. We got busy with our youngest grandson's illness. He was one years old, doctors were up front of his condition saying we need to be prepared for the worst. My daughter would visit, but her husband only visited once to compare his deceased baby to our son's baby and how we all owe him for not being there when his son passed, but they lived hours away and the death was sudden. Our one-year-old grandbaby passed away last week. It was devastating to everyone. Our daughter came to the funeral with Kevin. He wore a suit, sat in front and repeatedly after the funeral was over, saying since the deceased is a baby, then the funeral shouldn't take more than 10 minutes. Me and my son heard, Kevin kept moving his seat causing noise. My daughter did nothing, just watched. 
he was telling guests that the government should ban funerals for infants to save money and time and avoid gatherings. I was livid. I asked my daughter to take her husband and leave. On the way out, Kevin extended his condolences to my son and asked him if his deceased baby had any unused clothes he could have to sell so he could pay me and my wife this month's rent. I got into a huge argument with him, called him disrespectful and kicked him out immediately. I called my daughter then. She kept apologizing for his behavior, didn't say he regretted it or anything. I just told her that I will not tolerate this behavior and will be sending her and her husband an eviction note so they needed to start looking for a place to stay. She called me unreasonable for how I reacted, cruel and unsupportive after she saw how he behaved at an innocent child's funeral. She wanted me to let it go and will convince Kevin to apologize, but what he said was irreversible, hurting a grieving parent. She kept apologizing, telling me he understands how hard it is. It is just he feels it's not fair to lose a child so suddenly. She's been talking to my wife saying I made a selfish decision and was trying to punish her for her husband's actions. My wife and I made that decision together, but my wife feels we might have been harsh on them. Now, 100%, you're not gonna be the arsehole for, for doing that. What he said was absolutely disgusting. A child's funeral asking for if there's any clothes that they can sell. I mean, come on, man, please. And this is from someone who lost a child themselves, even if they were bitter for it or whatever. I, I can't even imagine what's going through that person's head. You'd have thought they had some empathy for what that person's going through as well, but clearly not. And again, this might be a reaching statement here. It might be totally wrong, but I'm going to say it anyway, because why not, right? Maybe reach out to your daughter and ask her if she's truly okay, if there's something more going on here, because... Although Kevin is probably grieving, and as I always say, people grieve in different ways, but his behavior is not like a normal person, the way he's acting, the way he's being shitty to everyone around him. And if he's being shitty to people that he doesn't know, and he's willing to act like that at a funeral, what's, what's going on in his home life with his wife? It's just something that popped in my head. And as I said, might be completely wrong, might be completely reaching, but I thought I'd throw that one out there too. But Danny Pop says, absolutely not the asshole. Respectfully, fuck him. If she chooses to stay with him, that's her business, but you don't have to deal with his selfish, bullying behavior. And Chagrin Girl says, not the asshole. Having a disability of any kind does not justify mentally torturing others. And that's precisely what this asshole is doing. Your daughter is completely enabling him and that non-apology is worthless. You are under absolutely no obligation to support them and you never were. Do not let them guilt you. Your son-in-law will not change. Your daughter has made it clear she is with him no matter what. Time for them to be adults and look after themselves. Stand firm on the eviction and if either of them contact you to complain about it, hang up slash delete and please, if he is emotionally abusing his children, report it. And Maddie Kett says in quotes, punishing you for his actions and then says, okay, divorce him and kick him out and you can stay. Not the asshole. Sorry for your loss. And Z Bleep says, not the asshole, but this sounds like Kevin could be an abuser towards your daughter. The signs are there and he appears to be purposely trying to antagonize her family until you all remove yourself from her. I'd be extremely careful here. This doesn't just sound like Kevin being an asshole and your daughter playing along. It's conceivable that there are some physical abuse you haven't seen. And I think you should be very, very aware of this sort of abuse technique of distancing the victim from her family by acting in a way that forces her family to remove themselves from her life. And now I turn this one to you guys. What do you guys think of this situation? And what do you think the family can do about it? Do you think the family is entitled to just completely cut them out? Or do you think there is something more going on? As I said, it might be reaching, but who knows? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And our next story is from a throwaway account. Am I the arsehole for telling my boyfriend it's completely his fault? His package wasn't delivered. My boyfriend and I have been living in the same house for two years. I had the address memorized before we moved in. I also memorized his previous address after a week. He could never remember it and had been living there for over a year. A few weeks ago, he ordered almost $600 worth of tools for a project. This is a lot of money for us, but he had been saving for it and was finally able to make the purchase. It wasn't expected to be delivered for several weeks because stuff was on back order. He checked his email today and checked the tracking just to see where it was. It was marked as delivered four days ago. Our entire yard is gated, which means people can't steal it. And we have cameras. Nothing was delivered on the day and time that it says it was. It was late at night here, so customer service isn't open. He was freaking out, trying to figure out what happened. And then he went quiet and said, babe, what's our house number? I said 3529 fake number. I looked at his phone and he had typed in the delivery address as 3592. 
He got very upset, swearing up and down. And I understand because now that's all that money lost. The house in question is a few doors down and I offered to head over there tomorrow and see if they still had it. Well, after a minute of him sitting there swearing, I told him while this is very unfortunate, it is completely his own fault. He said it's not his fault he can't remember things. I told him that he has a history of not being able to remember addresses. Knowing that, he should write it down on his phone and double check every time he orders something. He says I'm being an asshole for not being sympathetic, but I said that is his own fault for not double checking. I do feel bad, but I always check several times that the address is correct before ordering something for this exact reason. And I don't know what he wants me to do about it. Am I the asshole? Now, I'm going to tell you straight up on this one. The comments are overwhelming, not the arsehole. But I do question it. The initial question of telling my boyfriend is completely his fault. His package wasn't delivered. And yes, it is his fault. He should be more responsible, you know, remembering his own address. I mean, it's not the hardest thing to do in the world. Or write it down, like you said. You're 100% right in that. But, you know, to say, I told you so <laughs> when this has happened... You know, is that the right time to do it? I don't know. I couldn't see myself doing it if that happened to a partner, you know, and they were stressed out. They were in a stress situation and all this. And although it is their fault, absolutely. But I don't think I'd say, well, I did tell you so. <laughs> it's just not something I would do. So I kind of want to say, and everyone sucks here. And I know I'm going to get flack for that because, you know. <laughs> it's not OP's fault anyway. But for the initial question, I think it is an everyone sucks here for me. Just for that. And I might be wrong. And yeah, why not? Tell me I'm wrong, sure. But Beautiful Concern says, not the arsehole, if he knows he can't remember things, which I call bullshit on personally, a bad memory seems to afflict a lot of people who can remember the stuff that's important to them, but can't remember the stuff they expect someone else to deal with. Then he should have double checked. Frankly, if I was ordering something that was financially significant, I'd be double checking the address anyway, in case of typos, etc. Send him to the house he ordered to so he can check if they have his package. If they are honest people, either they have it and hand it over, or they have returned to sender, in which case he will get his money back and can try again. I don't give sympathy for situations that are entirely the person demanding sympathy's fault. Yeah, I know, it's true. <laughs> Cyanide says I'm not the arsehole. I have a hard time remembering stuff. So I have a notes folder on my phone for passwords, one for old addresses, one for birthdays. Every time I use my keys, I clip them onto my purse after. If I don't, I'll never remember. If someone is forgetting it is their responsibility to figure out what works for them, not just say, it's not my fault, I don't remember. Well then, whose fault is it? Surely not OP's, not the seller's. It's his fault. And well, 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 look who we have here. Savage Inc. Studios. Not the arsehole. He's an adult and needs to take responsibility if he screws up. And Bert the Nerd says, in quotes, Then he went quiet and said, Babes, what's our house number? Then says, What the fuck? Even in this moment, he could not check it on his own. Your timing was suboptimal. But after the sentence, I consider you justified. Sometimes you have to comfort one. Sometimes you have to confront one. This was the second case. He possibly lost 600 bucks because of his irresponsibility. Most computers can pre-save one's address. Perhaps that happened more than once in the past. And this is the first time he noticed it. Not the asshole. And now I turn this one to you guys. What do you guys think of this situation? And how would you deal with it? <laughs> Let me know in the comments below. And our next story is from Animal Guy Throwaway. Am I the arsehole for refusing to leave the bar with my girlfriend early to go and check on her dog and telling her that her dog is not my problem? I've been dating this woman I call Julie for a year and a half. We are both 24. Julie is great, but if there's one thing I don't love about her is that she's one of those dog mums. Like constantly referring to a Yorkie, I think that's what it is, as her child, which I can't stand. She has a stroller that she takes the dog out in and I find it utterly ridiculous. When she isn't home, she puts the dog in her crate to prevent it from pissing or shitting all over the apartment, a rule we both agreed on when moving in together. The problem is that she goes through separation anxiety from the dog and if we go somewhere for more than two hours, she starts to have panic attack, saying that we need to get home because the dog needs to be out of the crate. Now, I personally know people who have kept their dogs in crates for much longer and it's fine, but Julie starts getting all upset saying how sad and abandoned her child probably feels. We need to go let her out. Julie and I were at the bar over the weekend with some of our friends. A couple of friends came in from out of town and it was great getting back with everyone. We got there at 8 and by 10, 11, Julie started to get paranoid. She started saying we needed to leave soon because the dog has been crated for too long. She kept making small comments letting me know that she wanted to go and was getting upset. I finally decided I had had enough and asked to talk to her outside away from everybody. 
I said something along the lines, look, if you'd like me to call you an Uber to get back, I will, but it's not my dog. I'm done letting my social life be dictated by a damn dog. It probably doesn't mind being in the crate, and if it does, it's a dog, so whatever. You can go, but I'm staying with our friends. Your dog isn't my responsibility. She got angry and told me that not supporting the dog is not supporting her. I said there's a difference between supporting a dog and revolving my life around one, and the latter is not something I'm willing to do. She ended up leaving and I stayed. We got in a fight when I got home and she's been weird ever since. I apologize if I sounded rude and hurt her feelings, but I still stand by the principle of what I said. It's a dog, not a kid. You can leave your dog at home for however long to go live your life. I don't see how that's a problem. Edit, this is hilarious. And we're gonna go straight to the comments with this one with Jemima as Lana saying, you're the asshole, dude. Why are you with a woman you so obviously despise? You're not the asshole for not wanting to leave your friends for a dog, but this started way before then. You knew about her dog and how she found about it before you moved in. As much as I think she's going way overboard, obviously has some anxiety she might benefit from getting help for and has her priorities kinda effed up, I still think you're the asshole because you chose to be with her and now you show such contempt for her. Are you surprised that she didn't magically change when your superior self moved in? Have you considered that you might be causing her anxiety, triggering her a more intense need to be with a dog more often? She's not leaving situations for the dog. She's using the dog as her excuse to get out of situations she can't deal with. She's obviously not okay and you're just not seeing it. You sound insufferable. You'd give me anxiety attacks as well and I don't even have anxiety. Maybe that dog needs to become her official service animal so she can bring it with her. Maybe then she can be around people for longer without having to flee back home. And SK Cup says everyone sucks here. You guys have different expectations around what it means to have a pet. I agree with you. Her treatment of the dog is inappropriate. It's not good for her or for the dog. Codependent pet owners are the worst. That said, I think you guys need to have a conversation about boundaries before these things happen while you're out in public and with friends. I'm not sure I think you are unaware that she'd start to feel anxious about the dog around two hours into your visit. Have the conversation before you leave and make it clear you want her to get her needs met and also that you get your needs met. Okay, so how long would you like to stay? I'd like to stay four to five hours or until the party winds down. Can we make a plan for the dog so you can either come home earlier than me or we agree that it's okay for him to be alone that long? Don't wait until the predictable thing happens and she freaks out and then gives you a semi-ultimatum to either go home or suck it up. Planning ahead and discussing each other's comfort levels with stressors is important in a relationship and this kind of feels like it may have been a subconscious setup on your part to confront her about a relationship with the dog and that's not cool. ETA, just want to reflect that I agree with the top comment as well. OP is absolutely disregarding his girlfriend's well-being by not recognizing that her codependence with a dog is indicative of other deeper anxieties and that's shitty. And now I'm gonna turn this one straight to you guys. What do you guys think of this situation and how would you deal with it? Let me know in the comments below. Now, once again, guys, thank you for being here today. I hope you did enjoy today's stories. Thank you so much for spending 20 minutes or so on a video and listen to a few stories. It means the absolute world to me. And I can't stress that enough. Thank you so much. And if you want to support the channel further, you absolutely can by clicking that join button down below for YouTube or clicking the link in the description for Patreon and joining up there. Thank you so much. And I will see you in the next one. Take care, guys. Much love.